This is Movies on TV Podcast Industries. We're back with the MCU and talking about Wakanda forever. Show them who we are. You think I'm holding back? Welcome back, fellow Defenders. We're back in the cinema for Wakanda Forever, the 30th movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the end of Phase 4. I'm one of your hosts of TV Podcast Industries, Derek. Hello there, fellow Defenders. I am one of your other hosts, John. Welcome to, yes, Wakanda Forever. Yeah, we, we feel like we've been waiting a long time for this one. Um, I think Black Panther, the original movie, was the 18th movie in uh, in the MCU. Mad, isn't it? Yeah, and now we're on the 30th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, we uh, did uh, the original Black Panther on Defenders TV podcast yeah, 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 was back like our, in the day. Yeah, it was like our 134th episode, I think. Yeah, uh, very episode. soon after we'd covered the Punisher that's on right. Marvel Netflix. That's how long ago it was. That was yeah. before all the Marvel TV shows on Disney Plus. I think it was before even <laughs> there was a Disney Plus uh, channel, channel. Effectively, this is back when we had Netflix uh, TV shows that we were covering for um, for Defenders TV podcast. Yeah, uh, we have done a lot, a lot of stuff uh, since then. Lots of movies, as I said, twelve different uh, Marvel movies alone, uh, and then all the other TV shows that we cover even outside of Marvel. So, uh, lots and lots of ground has gone by. Uh, uh, since uh, the first time we covered Black Panther. Yeah, definitely. If this is the first time you are joining us for our coverage of all things Marvel, please head on over to tvpodcastindustries.com mm-hmm. where you can subscribe to any good or evil podcast catcher of your choice. Please subscribe and share the podcast because, of course, sharing the podcast is sharing, sharing the, the love. love. Yes, um, And, of course... We love to hear from our fellow defenders Mm -hmm. as well. So if you have any thoughts on Wakanda Forever or anything to do with the Disney Plus Marvel shows that we've been covering, such as She-Hulk, such as Miss Marvel, Mm -hmm. um, then please send your thoughts into feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or you can join us over on our Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash TV Podcast Industries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing everybody's thoughts about uh, Wakanda Forever. Definitely. Yeah. Shall we get into our spoiler-filled chit-chat about Wakanda Forever? Yes, definitely. So then, Derek, what are some of the details for this movie? Yeah, this uh, this movie was directed once again by Ryan Coogler, who directed, um, of course, Black Panther. Uh, the story for the movie was also written by Ryan Coogler. And again, screenplay for uh, Wakanda Forever is written by Ryan Coogler and Joe Robert Cole, both co-wrote the screenplay for Black Panther as well. So um, great to have the full team back together. It really does Definitely. feel like that kind of family movie, doesn't it? It feels yeah. like everybody that could come back has come back uh, for this movie. The movie, of course, starring Letitia Wright now, as Shuri, uh, Lupita Nyong'o as Nakia, D- Danai Guerrero as Akoya, uh, Winston Duke as Mbaku, Dominique Thorne coming in as Riri Williams, uh, Florence Kusumba as Oya, uh, Michaela Coel joining the team uh, as Annika, Tonish Herta making his first appearance here as Namor. Yes, the, indeed. The Silver Mariner, uh, as he's called in the comic books. Yes, of course, Martin Freeman returns as Everett Ross. There is the wonderful Angela Bassett as Queen Ramonda. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex Levin Ali as Atuma, uh, Mabel Cadena as Namora, Julia Louis Dreyfus, of course, as Val, or as we like to call her, Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. And of course, uh, a little surprise as well mm-hmm. with Michael B. Jordan as Eric Killmonger. Yeah, great that they found a way to get Michael B. Jordan in here. He, of course, has played Eric Killmonger in uh, in Black Panther and did return to the role for uh, the What If uh, animated series, uh, voicing the character there. But I was really surprised to see him yes. on screen again. It was great, a great surprise. It really was. Yeah. And I also thought it was someone else in that moment mm. um, as well, which we'll come to. We'll come to, absolutely. Yes. But John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for Wakanda Forever. Sure. Wakanda is in mourning after the loss of King T'Challa. Despite all of her technological advances, his sister Shuri was unable to save him. In the aftermath of T'Challa's death, 
Queen Ramonda tries to secure Wakanda's future after the world eyes up Wakanda's source of power. But when she tells the assembled world leaders that Wakanda will never share their vibranium, some of the nations align to find their own. In their rush to find vibranium, the US uncover a deposit of the powerful material outside of Wakanda and awaken the hidden nation of Tolokan and their god king Namor. After destroying the ship to keep Tolokan hidden, Namor reaches out to join forces with the Wakandans to find and kill the scientist who created this new tool to find vibranium. Princess Shuri, still unable to fully process her grief, is brought on a field excursion with Akoya to find the young scientist Riri Williams, after getting a lead from Everett Ross. But the Tolokans intercept them, taking Shuri and Riri. Meanwhile, Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine has reconnected with her ex-husband Everett Ross to investigate the Wakandan activities on US soil, learning of the new society under the ocean and Wakanda. She also learns of her former husband's traitorous dealings with the Wakandans and has him arrested. To rescue her daughter, Shuri, Queen Ramonda enlists the help of Nakia, who separated herself from Wakanda when T'Challa died. She's successful, but brings the ire of Namor. The god of the Tolokans attacks Wakanda and drowns Queen Ramonda, leaving Shuri all alone, angry and vengeful. Shuri regains the power of her ancestors to become the Black Panther. With a plan, the Wakandans draw out Namor and the Tolokans to repay the attack on Wakanda. In the battle, Shuri captures Namor, showing mercy to him instead of vengeance, and creating an uneasy alliance with the Tolokans. In Wakanda, M'Baku steps up to take the throne as Shuri goes to Haiti to finalise her period of mourning for T'Challa. Shuri meets Nakia and Prince T'Challa, son of King T'Challa. A very emotional movie overall. Definitely. Really, isn't it? Um, it is. I think I think we should probably just start quickly um, with what's your overall thoughts on the movie before we go into our points and discuss it in detail. John, what, what did you think overall of Wakanda Forever? Uh, for me, I just thought this movie was great. Um, this is like, I think, quite frankly, a really amazing MCU movie mm. uh, in terms of doing something quite personal, obviously, with the death of Chadwick Boseman mm. and, and how they have done this sequel to the original Black Panther, yeah. but also introducing um, Namor uh, as well for me mm-hmm. is just fantastic. So I love this movie. I thought it was really, really good. It's certainly long. Um, yeah. I feel it deals with the theme of death and grief um, and how you process that uh, really, really interestingly. Yeah. Um, also, just, I mean, quickly in relation to, you know, this dealing with Chadwick Boseman quite personally, mm-hmm. I, I think they get the balance of it just right. I think there's Me the too. potential that they may over-egg that focus a mm-hmm. little. Um, and I guess it depends on, on where you're coming from. I think what's really good is that the... The interjection of Michael B. Jordan in this movie Mm -hmm. has a bit of a sobering thought around the eulogizing of T'Challa. Yes. uh, Which is really kind of sobering and feels at odds with the rest of the film because effectively indicates his flaws as being too noble uh, to to be a decisive leader. So it's... I, I think that little bit of balance that they have actually just centers everything around how this movie is doing a number of different things here firstly it's telling a black panther movie Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a sequel to the other one it's part of the mcu it's introducing a new character to the mcu in the more yeah but it is also a story that is having to deal with the loss of its lead actor Mm -hmm. with chadwick boseman from a dreadful illness. Yeah, yeah. And I think it does that really, really well. I think it's quite a tightrope that you have to do to yeah. do that. But ultimately, I absolutely loved this storyline. Mm-hmm. I loved the the focus back on Wakanda and I loved the introduction of 
Tolokan and Namor yeah. and that whole society as well. And it's just fascinating to me that they are, you know, Ryan Coogler has mainstreamed unapologetic black African um, storytelling mm-hmm. here yeah. um, in a huge budget movie. Yeah. And also now he's done that with Miso Americans, um, you know, mm-hmm. in, in, and I think that is just fantastic. It is. It is. He has such a great way of showing off and developing a nation, developing a completely um, unheard of society. He did that so well in establishing Wakanda in Black Panther. And now he's done it again here with Wakanda and expanding it. The traditions that they have here, particularly in the morning scenes for Wakanda, are really, really interesting. The uh, the rules and rights and the uh, the history that he brings to a society that doesn't exist in the world is really really good and he's done it again with the Tolokans and with uh with Namor it's really really good there's sometimes you you get a feeling for what Marvel as a studio is like and I think this movie exemplifies that they always talk about Marvel being a small studio with a family of people that work yeah. together on movies and you can't believe it sometimes when they've made so many billion dollars dollar movies there's lots of pushback against Marvel now because they're such a successful studio but you see a movie like this and you can feel in it this is a small film being told on a massive canvas with a huge budget but it is about this family of people mourning the loss of one of their central leaders absolutely so many interesting things have come out since black panther was originally filmed about the fact that chadwick boseman was aware of his illness when the original movie was being filmed he was very sick when the original black panther was being filmed and he pushed himself every day to deliver this story that he believed in. And because of that, the rest of the group were so dedicated to telling the story on the screen. They knew how important it was because it was important to him. And that's why this morning feels so earned. But you're right, the balance that they need to strike in the movie was really well done because it can fall over into morning Chadwick Boseman as opposed to them t- telling the story yeah. about, about T'Challa. And it is really important to have Killmonger rebalance that because while it's wonderful to have a movie morning an actor if you focus on that then you lose the point of having the movie in the first place so uh they did i think they did a really good job the opening moments of this movie are yeah really emotional um and, I think, and it, it, it carries on throughout i think the opening and closing of it is where it really kind of uh works uh for me i mean this movie as well is is emotional there's yeah. a lot of around death here and people dying in the movie yeah um which is you know pretty on the nose in terms of the the number of funerals ha- being had yeah. here um i also think it is a successor to the black panther but i almost feel it's slightly apart this to me feels slightly distinct from the rest of the MCU in terms of what they were doing with this movie. Even though it's got MCU running through it, I'm not saying it's not, yeah, part, yeah. but it, it feels a bit like the Eternals to me. It feels just slightly, the, 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 a step's just been taken to the left, and I mean a good step, yeah. and told a story which is very personal and mm-hmm. um, much more, in a sense... Um, around its own world rather than the wider MCU. Yep, yep. Uh, and I, I think, to me, it has that in common with something like The Eternals. And so mm-hmm. in that respect, it may or may not necessarily be for everyone's uh, tastes. Yeah. Um, it, it's difficult to know, to be honest. Yeah, but and, for uh, me, I absolutely love this movie. Yeah, and if you haven't heard our, our other episodes discussing the, the movies and TV shows that have gone on throughout Phase 4, this has kind of been a, a constant refrain from us as uh, people that are big fans of what Marvel has delivered over the course of all of its phases. But in Phase 4, they feel like they're taking many more chances to deliver for more niche audiences, for smaller audiences, but telling the right story for those audiences. There's lots of people that have complaints about Marvel movies no longer being action entertainment that you can that every single person can go and see whereas i definitely and i know we've talked about it on uh, on our yeah. discussions about the movies it feels like they they are creating really new worlds and really new movies doing different things with um big 
budget blockbusters, you know, so, something like Shang-Chi, which we absolutely loved, wouldn't have been, have been able to be made a couple of years ago in Marvel. They wouldn't have been able to make a movie like that. Something like The Eternals is a very ponderous film about the entirety of human history uh, into a movie. It was absolutely wonderful, but a complete departure from other Marvel movies and didn't connect with that mass audience. Yeah. And I do feel at times watching this movie, if you hadn't got the connection with the first Black Panther movie or didn't have the connection with uh, the character of T'Challa, you may be left behind by what this movie, the, the story this movie's telling. If you want to go out on a Saturday night for a, an action adventure movie and you're being presented with a couple of funerals effectively throughout the movie and a movie about mourning and loss, that may not be what you want to experience when you go to the cinema. That's, that's absolutely that's absolutely some people's choices. But because we have been following these characters for so long and these actors for so long, it did feel like a necessary thing to do with Wakanda Forever. So really, really enjoyed what they put on screen here. And, and it, it did feel um, like I was joining the collective morning uh, as as the movie went on, kind of taking on that journey, which is where we start with our point number one, that kind of the intro and the death of T'Challa, the funeral uh, for T'Challa and how Wakanda all comes together. I think this was filmed beautifully, but even from that opening moment where you see Shuri trying to create a cure for this yeah. disease that's kill, killing her brother. Obviously, Chadwick Boseman not able to return for, for any scenes in this movie because he had passed way before uh, filming began. But it's all th- told through Shuri's eyes. And that is the entire movie is really told through Shuri's eyes. Yeah. Um, she was such a great comedy foil in the first movie. She was she brought so much joy to the first movie. And here you're seeing her broken down by the loss of her brother. Yeah. Um, and and, and not her only, unable to do anything about it. Absolutely. And, and that is the key thing. It's that sudden interjection of death and loss uh, for someone that you care about, mm. that you see here. And it's that transition from her being the younger sister the one constantly niggling, poking, yeah. sort of questioning the older brother. Um, it is this, you know, hugely intelligent, highly successful woman who understands technology, a scientist unable to find the cure uh, for the person uh, she loves. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that is effectively the setup here yeah. for Shuri uh, throughout this entire film because it, and it, it, it's about her inability to move away from the, the, the loss of her brother, how she processes her grief, mm-hmm. this underlying sentiment of, I could have done something, but I failed, yeah. blaming herself. And that being compounded throughout the the film, um, yeah. really, until she is spoken through the ancestral plane by by her her mother, and so mm-hmm. you know, I I thought this was a really quite fantastic journey from the first Black Panther movie with Shuri and how she was in that movie. If mm-hmm. you look back at um and, and rewatch it to this, um, in in a sense, growing up in a way of having to understand the traditions you know she was the she was the the young kid of the family slightly irreverent of all these customs and traditions not understanding why some of them are there which is to help them process Mm -hmm. different things whether it's joy and in this case grief and loss and and being skeptical of the ancestral plane yeah. that um the the other black panthers the uh, family members um go to mm-hmm. and effectively feeling alone and consumed internally yeah. by uh by herself because there isn't that thing that custom and as the movie goes on other people to be able to lean on yeah. uh, around this. So, uh, though this was, you know, that's a huge setup in these yeah. opening scenes. But it's, um, it's also a huge part of her journey. You know, again, it's that argument of science versus faith. And there's some really interesting discussions that are in here. You know, I'm not a person of faith myself, I am an atheist, but I'm always really interested in the safety and security that some people get from their faith. And in this society of Wakanda, they know that there is an ancestral plane where their predecessors go to. Um, 
this is what gives Queen Ramonda her comfort. And there is that really interesting discussion between Shuri and, and Ramonda saying, you know, I have this, I have my faith, I have my belief, I have my knowledge of the afterworld that we uh, that we know is there from uh, in in for Wakandans. What do you have? What does your science give you? What solace does it give you um, in your science to Shuri? I think that's a really interesting discussion that they have. And really because of this kind of knowledge of the afterlife, I think that adds to the traditions of the Wakandans that you see in this funeral procession. There is joy in it as well. It's not just yeah. a solemn event there is joy there is a celebration that's going on as well when yeah. we see the passing of uh, of t'challa there is a um a coming together of the whole community and i think it's beautifully filmed the idea of them of everybody in wakanda all dressed in their in their white funeral garb the idea from queen ramonda that once you are completed your period of mourning then you burn your funeral outfit because that is the end you you close down that chapter of mourning and move on um you know all of these traditions that are that are put in here i think are are really really uh, really, really good and expand that world of wakanda definitely and I, I think to your point i thought that was one of the interesting things when she goes to burn the robes and Shuri doesn't see any point in this mm -hmm. custom yeah and effectively is telling her mother you know you're you're leaning on the these customs and that that she just doesn't believe in, believe in. Yeah. and to to what you said that queen ramonda comes back and says well what how do you process this what exactly. does your science your technology yeah. help you how does that help you to yeah. process it and of course the point is she isn't processing exactly it. irrespective of technology science or customs or or beliefs she isn't processing yeah. it as a person she's stuck in her grief she's yeah. stuck in her grief yeah. exactly and i think that's like was was so impactful mm -hmm. um in, in this moment so yeah i mean a really head-on introduction mm -hmm. um you know, yeah. with with everything at, and the death of T'Challa, um, effectively off screen. Yeah. And um, yeah. so, yeah, a very powerful introduction. Absolutely. Um, and I thought it was a really interesting choice, uh, and I thought it was um really well done. Yeah. I think one of the notable absences at this moment in the movie for me was not seeing Nakia there, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was interesting because, you know, as the love interest of T'Challa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we'll come to that uh, as we move through the movie and discuss it. Absolutely, absolutely. Because they do deal with all the, all the other impacts of uh, of losing King T'Challa, who had reached out in the past, who'd, who had this idea of... Um, sharing what Wakandans knew with the world and or setting up the outreach centers. So we see the impact of that now five, six years on, actually, because it's uh, it's five years where we had the snap. Uh, and then we have a couple of years where T'Challa had come back after yeah. uh, after the, the return from um, from Avengers uh, Endgame. And now out in the world as the outreach centers that Wakanda are, are managing and, and uh, helping the world, but what the world leaders really want is, can we not have your vibranium to make weapons, of course, because... That's what some of the world leaders are going to want. You know, you have these ama this amazing um, material that we could use to make even better weapons to fight against each other. And I love where the regal Queen Ramonda is saying, you will never, ever get your hands oh, on my brain. Oh, absolutely. That is ours. We've had it for a millennia now. We know how to handle it, but we know what you would do with it the minute you got it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to be honest, I was there going, I wish there were more Queen Ramondas in international absolutely. politics because effectively I, I love how she is both not direct and hugely direct mm -hmm. in her dealings with the the um the the attack sort of sponsored by the french delegation mm -hmm. to steal vibranium from one of the outreach centers yeah where she parades those troops through this huge conference center yeah. and, wonderful term you know and and, yeah. and really saying you know we're not worried about vibranium it is about what you would do with it your mm -hmm. intentions that's what we don't uh trust here exactly and that's why we're not going to share it and of course this leads on to them looking for their own sources of vibranium mm -hmm. having seen what it can do from a technological or military point of view yeah and um, so it, it again it's just it's that global juxtaposition, isn't it, of 
the the warmongering that happens and mm-hmm. um, everyone preaches peace but is ultimately still building weapons looking for the one upmanship yeah. effectively yeah and um, like we see with i guess ukraine at the moment so mm-hmm. you know th- it's kind of a, a strong message so um yeah i love that and i mean you know for me angela bassett in this role was just oh. phenomenal I um yeah. I, I loved her and yeah. um, i loved her the regalness the the power um the stoicism that she has mm-hmm. you know this is still um while she's grieving yeah. and having to deal with this as the the current ruler of Wakanda. Oh, she's just amazing. I yeah. love Angela Bassett. She brings such a heart uh, to this movie and such a strength to the character. Um, and wow, I love her with white hair. Uh, yeah. You do like it looks. She looks absolutely amazing. Uh, and and yeah, she. You can see why she would be a great leader for Wakanda. Um, you know, one of the things that stood out to me while I was watching the movie, um, how many central female characters are in this film yeah there's so many scenes that had all female characters working together and discussing with each other about how to deal with the antagonist and how to deal with uh the the outside world um that i also think that's a really important move for the mcu you know they get a lot of criticism for that moment in uh, avengers endgame where they had all the all their female heroes at a time uh getting together to yeah to fight against thanos it was a Two second moment and might as well do it. It didn't, it, it didn't impact the movie in any way, but you can see what they're what they're like when they're able to do a whole movie, which is basically centered around strong female characters because they have so many here in the world of Wakanda. You know, we even have another one with Dominic Thorne coming in as Riri Williams, a, another strong female character of Ironheart from the comic books. So yeah, lots and lots of strong female characters here, led by Angela Bassett, who has even Val always been as great. well. Yeah, you yeah. know, as effectively. The director of the CIA. Yeah, it, that, that's what I thought when, when they when she came in that she's the director of the CIA. We didn't yeah. know that before this no. movie, did we? No, we didn't. No. Oh, we'll we'll talk about I'm sure uh, Valentina Allegra de Fontaine uh, later on uh, in in our discussion. But um, that kind of is the opening of the film. This is the setup of where Wakanda is and why the rest of the world is looking for vibranium. And and it's almost the push from Wakanda saying you'll never get your hands on some, so why don't you go and find your own? That kind of leads into the introduction of our big antagonist for the movie and and our point number two yeah Yeah. i mean so the rest of the world goes digging and finds something very unexpected Mm -hmm. um which is this hidden civilization of tolokan um well they find them because the rest of the world finds this deposit of vibranium in the ocean but Um, uh it introduces us to the underwater city of tolokan and the god figure of uh namor as the antagonist in here and Mm. for me this was really special um i absolutely loved it to be honest i Mm. think um like i'm not necessarily a huge namor fan i haven't um you know other than i guess things like being in the defender comics or with the illuminati or where he's introduced in various different um stories uh i i think He's a fascinating character because that protectiveness mm-hmm. of his world, you know, underwater world of his people yeah. has always been strong with the character of Namor. Yeah. And it really comes out here. And I think what I loved about this was linking it to effectively the colonization of Central America mm. uh, by... Uh, the Spanish conquistadors, Mm -hmm. uh, and how this is a refuge for the the Mayans that were slaughtered, killed, subjugated in the Yucatan Peninsula, um, you know, specifically, Mm -hmm. um, and how that sort of transpires. Again, similar similarities with Wakanda here in that, you know, a hidden um, civilization. Yeah. There is the vibranium aspect mm-hmm. here that Namor effectively uses to create light or the sun underwater mm-hmm. in the deep recesses of, of the ocean. Yeah. I love that um, you have 
a plant growing in this vibranium rich soil and um, slightly different hue to it a, a blue mm -hmm. rather than a purple and you know so all these similarities between these two civilizations yeah uh, but one that is still very much about protecting uh it from the outside world as the wakanda of the past did before king t'challa absolutely uh, but I love that the reason for this is because it is this refuge. Mm -hmm. It is this new civilization. It is this continuation of this ancient, um, you know, past civilization of the Mayans. Yeah. And I love Namor's backstory here mm. that he tells after he's captured Shuri. And I mean, this is still the hopeful moment where both the the Tolokans and the Wakandans can work together, mm -hmm. even though Queen Ramonda believes she has been kidnapped. And, I mean, she has in a sense, but it is a respectful one. It's still waiting to have a decision around whether th these two civilizations can work together yeah. to protect themselves from, effectively, outside interference. Mm -hmm. And I love as... Namor takes Shuri through how they came to be mm -hmm. in taking this this plant like the Black Panther does, but effectively turning them blue mm -hmm. and making them aquatic in, in yeah. a sense, or yeah. semi-aquatic, being able to withstand and using that as an escape from the conquistadors, mm -hmm. that you have this kind of beautiful moment with the the young Namor fulfilling his dead mother's wishes again, his whole thing as well is, has death um, sort of yeah. overarching it because she wanted to be buried in the land that she grew up. So it mm -hmm. brings her back to the surface in order to, to bury her. And you see um, the, the, the colonial, uh, Spanish and mm -hmm. um, with the the slaves of the the Mayan um, people still there, or maybe it's the Aztecs at this stage. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not too sure, but and him extracting vengeance again, another mm -hmm. strong thread through this Absolutely. this movie is you know if you blame someone for the death of um of someone you love, mm -hmm. it do you take forgiveness or do you have vengeance well, retribution yeah. Yeah. again part of the point with shuri is in a sense that's why she's beating herself up mm -hmm. because she feels she is the one that let t'challa down yeah. and, you know yeah. so it, it 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 this is all really intricate but i love this backstory i love mm. seeing it i loved um then him taking her through uh, the city of Tolokan. Yes, And absolutely. just seeing these smiling faces of people mm -hmm. doing their their agriculture, going about, having fun, and yeah. uh, again, just using that ancient... Um, I think it's a welcome. It's almost like mm -hmm. a handshake, I guess. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but the, the kind of almost open clamshell yeah. um, sort of pose of the hands... I loved that. Um, I, I saw on Twitter that this is within the codex of the um, the the Mayan uh, civilization, right. uh, and it, I think it's a, a greeting. Mm -hmm. And you see Namor do that when he comes down onto his throne as well later on, yeah, uh, in a more open way. Uh, but it 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 was just fantastic. Yeah. I just really loved it. So. I, um, I love just seeing this new world. Absolutely. And, you know, once again, Ryan Coogler and, and Joe Robert Cole creating an entire new civilization based on traditions and histories, and but making it feel like a living civilization here as well. It's really, really good. Uh, to, to the point of, of Namor, the character himself, you know, in the Marvel comics, he's one of the oldest characters in Marvel comics. He's been around since uh, since the very early days of Marvel. And what's so interesting about Namor is that he can be and has been used many times as an antagonist, 
and the protagonist. He's yeah. been a hero, a member of the Avengers. He's been a very strong uh, member of the Illuminati. The but Defenders he's all- as well. Yeah, at the Defenders as well. But he's also been a massive antagonist when especially when there's some kind of attack on his home people and his homeland. He's very protective of Atlantis in the comic books, not Talakan, but um, he's really protective of that. And, you know, that's why he's able to be used in a way like this. You do understand why he's so protective of Talakan. They've they've been hidden for so many centuries, just like Wakanda, but they never reached out, whereas Wakanda did reach out. They had uh, people around the world, um, whereas he's been keeping his entire people safe and suddenly because the world is trying to find vibranium they're getting closer and closer to uncovering this nation and the thing is as well i love this change of it moving from being atlantis to mesoamerican Mm. because it adds so much more to why he would want to keep them safe Mm -hmm. hidden um and and prosperous in their own Right. Not only is it this difference between being a, an aquatic civilization and, and underwater as opposed to being a surface civilization, mm-hmm. um, it is also that due to his longevity, his age, he has the memories of the persecution, yes. of the violence, of the subjugation handed to his people Mm -hmm. uh, when on the surface, you know, that's what makes that surface and and underwater differential. And what is so clever, I think about moving it from being Atlantis, which you think of being primarily in say the Mediterranean, uh, Mm. you know, the Greek mythology of it to uh, one that embraces um, Mesoamerica. And it really connects with, you know, those, that ancient, the, the civilizations of Africa. So, you know, the, these similarities. And mm-hmm. um, so I, I thought this was just really great change yeah. to the origin of this civilization mm-hmm. and the more as well. Absolutely. And it's funny, isn't it? The, the reason they probably made this change is because of Aquaman, the DC movie, um, which is based in Atlantis and it would be confusing, you know, and it's it's one of those things that the movie was being written back in 2019, 2020 um, and present in the mind is the Aqua movie coming up and they're, they're thinking, oh, we can't do Atlantis as well at the same time. It'll yeah. cause confusion and because almost being forced into that position, I suppose, they create this amazing concept for the society, for Namor, for where it's coming from, for the reasons behind it. It's not just the hidden island of Atlantis, which people know in mythology it's really creating a, a, a really interesting backstory for the for the character yeah. and for for the society really really and good and I, th- I think it just adds so much weight yeah. to it um you know it, and as i say in the same way that it's kind of that running gag now for the wakandans calling ever ross the colonizer <laughs> you know Love um that. it's yeah. like it just it adds i think this change so much weight and i'm absolutely all for it yeah yeah and uh, this is this meeting really is all caused as you said by um namor and the and the telecans uh looking for the person that created this device to find vibranium that the uh, the americans and the french are using uh across the world trying to find vibranium and it turns out this is riri williams this is the young uh young character in college she has a very interesting um character herself she does seem quite like shuri doesn't she she seems quite like shuri in the first movie yes uh, that kind of style of of uh talking really fast and knowing everything she's really intelligent um and she's quite a funny character and interestingly uh, i did learn that dominique thorne had tried out for the role of shuri uh in the first black panther so she was in the mind of uh of ryan coogler from then when she tried out for the role of shuri so it's interesting that they've cast her here as riri williams and the two of them are kidnapped and brought to tulacan so that's why we get the whole uh introduction in this way and it does feel really friendly it feels like there's a moment there where you could have a tulacan wakandan alliance versus yeah, the rest exactly. of the world which works really well but on the surface in wakanda it it is leading to queen ramonda being really aggressive about what's happened to uh, for the loss of shuri she's now saying she's lost everything she's lost her husband she's lost her son she's now lost her daughter and all because um okoya the leader of the dora milage had taken shuri away to try and break her of the mourning and loss of her of her brother yeah, the wallowing yeah the wallowing exactly but 
it's gone so bad that now Akoya has been kicked out of the Dora Milaje and Queen Romanda wants to reach out to the only other person that she trusts to get her daughter back, which is Nakia. And that's how we get Nakia back into the story here. Yeah. I think the other thing as well, you know, this is all done by Namor effectively infiltrating into Wakanda. Yes. Uh, p- bypassing all their senses, mm-hmm. all their defenses, and speaking directly to the Queen with his proposal of um, effectively interrupting the burning of the mourning mm-hmm. uh, garments yeah. um, and offering this alliance and mm-hmm. um, showing the machine that can detect vibranium. But I guess that the, the hinge here is that the scientist Riri Williams who created it must be killed. Yeah. And um, that's it. And the, the great thing about this introduction and um, to Namor uh, is just the fact that A, the kahunas to infiltrate mm-hmm. Wakanda, yep. also showing his strength by this machine sh- suddenly and without them seeing being sort of placed on the on the shores of of the the lake mm-hmm. that um, he's he's kind of come into Wakanda uh, by, but also you know he's very clear. This this is the whole antagonist. You know, yes, I want to be an alliance member, an ally, mm-hmm. but it has to be done my way. Like there is an uncompromising nature to how the more delivers that offer effectively to Queen Ramonda and effectively freaks her out. So she's on edge, you know, the whole, because this person has got in, come directly to the queen Mm -hmm. um, and there's an edginess here. And that's the thing. You're seeing this wonderfulness of Tolokan and Shuri absolutely questions about killing the scientist uh, doesn't want that to happen, and yeah. um, and you see Namor still being um, adamant that he will do anything to protect. You know that yeah. there is a single mindedness here to what he's doing, yeah. and I love that there is an uncompromising element in some ways to to Namor. Yeah, and, and weirdly, it's kind of unspoken that they make the decision not to allow Riri Williams to be killed, the, the Wakandans, when they when they meet her, because of her age and because she's in college. But it's not really spoken. The issue here is not that she's young. It's that even by killing her, that wouldn't have solved the problems of Talakan. No. Effectively, what we hear from Riri Williams is she wrote this whole paper and she created this tool to find um, vibranium just as a project, because someone told her that she couldn't do it, so she did it. But it was taken and created by the CIA, by well, by the by the US government. That's that's what happened with it. So even if they did kill Riri Williams, the plans are all with the government, so they can just create another machine. It's yeah. nothing to do with um, whether they kill her or not. It wouldn't solve the problem. But that's what the whole cooperation between Talakan and Wakanda would hinge on. She could, she has to die there, yeah. and then we can work together. But Nakia does break into Talakan and free Shuri and um, and uh, Ree Williams, taking them back to Wakanda, which leads to this massive attack of the Talakan on Wakanda. Absolutely. I, I think, for me, I just love this reflection, this contrast here in this moment in the movie of the hope and joy of seeing this new civilization, the, you know, the people of Talakan being happy, uh, their protective leader, Shuri is amazement and wonder at this as well. Mm-hmm. You know, she is in awe of it. And yet it's it's the the twitchiness of Queen Ramonda with everything that's gone on yeah. and knowing that there is an undermining of this potential alliance right there and then, which happens with Nakia uh, stealthing in effectively mm-hmm. and, and rescuing shuri and riri but also killing uh two of two of the guards yeah and so you know even the queen is involved in that by by calling uh namor who offers her a shell Mm -hmm. after he makes this this offer to her of an alliance um and that moment um on the beach as well you know that threateningness of just as namor 
you know, just leans in to Queen Ramonda mm -hmm. to say what he will do to protect his people. Absolutely. Um, and this ultimately, I guess, moving to our point three mm -hmm. is the kickoff for it's not a full attack. It's actually supposed to just send a message. But yeah, I mean, exactly. it looks pretty full on, to be honest. And that's why it's so scary, though, yeah. uh, for the Wakandans, for everybody there. Because if this is him as half power with just some of his forces and they effectively overrun it like a flood coming through Wakanda, li quite literally, in fact, you see walls breaking yeah. down, you see people drowning um, all the way through Wakanda. This is how invasive it is. The water that uh, powers Namor and, and uh, where the Talokans hide can get anywhere within uh, within Wakanda. It can, it can break through walls, it can ba break through glass, and ends off killing Queen Ramonda. Namor goes straight to Queen Ramonda trying to get her to give back Riri Williams or kill Riri Williams. And again, when she refuses, they create this massive tsunami almost of water that washes through the it's like the water bombs room. effectively yeah could you imagine if you had them in school um <laughs> i mean these are explosive water bombs mm -hmm. that effectively flood entire things or can yeah. disable ships like we see later on yeah um i think it was really good and i mean that image which was also off the trailer where you see queen ramonda with riri Williams behind her, mm -hmm. and you see just the reflection of Namor using his spear mm -hmm. to try and break the glass. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I, I love the uh, Tolokan singing as well to sort of like mind control. Yeah, to to bring we see it on, uh, we see it where they're effectively pulling the Wakandans into the water mm -hmm. where they can then get the upper hand. It's the siren song. Yeah, uh, from, it is. From Greek mythology. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. siren song. It's really, yeah. really we'd see, uh, good. We'd I seen that it. earlier when they took out the uh, the international ship that was trying to find the, the vibranium where they effectively call all of the, uh, the, the sailors off the ship to drown them. And this time they take out all the EMTs, all the emergency me medical team from Wakanda and make them all jump into the water, um, which is really shocking considering we're about to lose Queen Ramonda and without any ENTs, um, she's unable to be safe. Absolutely. Uh, we also see the, the strength of of Namor here as well. You know, he takes out a number of their flying ships. You know, he can fly as well mm -hmm. as swim very, very fast. Oh, yeah. I loved uh, the look. I loved the pointy ears. I loved the wings around mm -hmm. his ankles. Just so good. Um, we see the strength with Mbaku, who tries to um, take him out when he sees him coming onto Wakandan soil. Mm -hmm. uh, effectively, just with sort of his arm raised, he deflects Mbaku's attack mm -hmm. and punches him very far. Yeah. And we and hear... And his weapon as well. This is, exactly. This is... We hear as well Mbaku saying later, he has the strength of the Hulk. So... Mm -hmm. You know, Namor is hugely, hugely powerful. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, this is a skirmish for him to send a message. Mm. And then we have this moment, as you say, with Queen Ramonda uh, drowning and dying to save Riri Williams. Yeah. This is who she is protecting um, from Namor uh, all the way through. And she mm -hmm. goes down, but just loses all the oxygen and ends off dead. Again, another huge moment for Shuri. She now has lost her father, her mother, and um, her her brother. Yeah. So, again, it's that next sort of strike to Shuri's just in as a person her you know this additional layer of grief yeah. that she is unable to handle and um, and i think it's it's hugely profound for shuri as the character and i you know i wasn't expecting yeah. queen ramonda to die i mean i really wish she didn't because I, you know it's the second funeral we see with them with their white mm -hmm. um funeral garments on the the coffin uh, another yeah. coffin and so just yeah, I just really wasn't expecting it. And again, it just added a layer of power to the 
effect it has on on Shuri. Yeah, I, um, I, I didn't expect know? it at all. And you know, they, they do have drownings in TV shows and movies for years. And I don't think I've had this moment for such a long time where I'm willing the people who are trying to save her to to get her to breathe again. I, I, re, I was holding my own breath, yeah. waiting for Queen Ramonda to breathe again. You know, Riri Williams eventually. Uh, surfaces after uh, after she also had had drowned but she comes back queen romanda unfortunately doesn't but yeah it, it was one of those moments where i'm going please don't kill that character because yeah. she's so important but it is important for the story of shuri to move into being able to uh, become the new black panther and it also gives us this great moment of development for the character of mbaku um who starts to become really important for the, from this moment onwards i think yes. from the from the death of queen ramonda because he starts to reach out to shuri because she has nobody else and uh, none of the rest of her family are there and gets a really uh, touching moment at the funeral where he seeks her guidance given that she's now going to be the new queen of wakanda yes. yeah. um he wonders whether um he should allow the rest of the wakandans to relocate to his homeland, to his home territory within Wakanda, or not. Um, and I think he's extending an olive branch to her to say, we can work together as leaders of this community, but I'm also here to have your back and take care of you. I think it's a, a, a great moment because of, of how the movie ends and where, where M'Baku gets to in the end of the film, but, um, but it's empowering her as well as him as a character. Absolutely. Like, I absolutely love this character of M'Baku. Oh, yeah. Uh, played by Winston Duke. I mean, it is, as you say, it, it is that development, again, from being the outcast tribe mm -hmm. uh, from the first movie here to rescuing T'Challa, giving safe harbour to uh, Queen Ramonda back in uh, after Killmonger has, has taken on the Black Panther mantle and, mm -hmm. and posed his his view uh, as the ruler of Wakanda. And, you know, in that moment where he is speaking with Shuri, it's also you, you get that sense of the relationship that he also had, even though it's been done off screen with Queen Ramonda. Mm -hmm. It is that duty to her. And even Queen Ramonda, where she is a, when she strips a coya of the Adora Milaje, mm. uh, at general ship, she is also speaking to the rest of that Wakandan council. Absolutely. Um, where she pointedly set talks of, uh, Mbaku and his tribe helping her. Mm. They are the ones that helped her everyone else fell in behind Killmonger. Mm -hmm. You know, that speech she gives is phenomenally good. Yeah. So powerful. And you you get this sense of this closer counsel between these two characters that you don't see on screen, but you get it here in this moment where he speaks with, with Shuri. And I really, really enjoyed that because yeah. that made huge amounts of sense to me that in some ways the outcast tribe that was always seen as the internal threat in Wakanda mm -hmm. um, through their actions from the first Black Panther movie for, for Queen Ramonda, he was seen as her sort of non-family counsel, her, the person she could lean on. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like how, you know, we hear of Akoya's former husband who effectively led the 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 introduction of Killmonger yeah, in yeah. where Queen Ramonda saying, you know, have I not given enough as Akoya saying, my husband's still in prison, you know, I've yeah, yeah. I've sacrificed everything and it's countered with Queen Ramonda saying have I not given enough? Yeah. You know, you can still see your husband, mm -hmm. which is interesting that he's still there, still alive, yeah. even though we don't see him. You know, another interesting sort of touch point here just to remember for potentially future mm -hmm. um movies is that we have the person that led the betrayal the the uprising yeah. uh, and allying himself with 
um, Killmonger mm-hmm. is still there in Wakanda under arrest. Yeah. Um, so interesting stuff. And I think we would have seen him. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya obviously has become a really big actor. He's been in so many great movies uh, since then. But I think he was filming uh, Nope when the filming for uh, Wakanda Forever was going on. So he was the only person that couldn't return uh, of the major cast. So uh, so you're right. There is just that reference that he is there. Okoye can visit him if she chooses to, but she chooses not to because he, of what he did to Wakanda. So she feels she's lost everything. But now, Queen uh, Armanda has had lost everything, uh, and um, but this this moment between Umbaku and uh, and Shuri re- really does lead her to go on her journey to discover um, her purpose, and that that she needs to become the new Black Panther. There needs to be a new protector, protector of yeah. Wakanda. Um, so that they won't suffer the kind of losses that they all suffered from uh, from no more. Which is our point number four, because this was all the speculation for the last two years, <laughs> I think, since the first couple of images started coming out. Uh, will we get a new Black Panther? Will there be somebody else? Who's going to be in uh, the uh, in the suit? And they really, really play with it, I think, uh, in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I think they really do. I think there's loads of people uh, that are that are possibly going to be in the suit. You know, Akoya being thrown out of the door Milage. There is a moment between her and Shuri where you're kind of thinking, oh, maybe Shuri will give her the suit because she's the most powerful, one of the most powerful warriors within uh, Wakanda. And then Nakia also returning uh, to Wakanda. Yeah. Um, and you get the reason from Nakia why she couldn't be there for the funeral. She tells Shuri that it wasn't King T'Challa's death. It was the death of her everything, the person that meant everything yeah. to her. It wasn't just the leader of, of Wakanda that had died. So you get this idea that maybe she's being inspired to take over the mantle of Black Panther as well. you know. And then you, all, you also get this thing of, well, Riri Williams is there. you know. I know in the comic books she's Ironheart, and I know in the trailer we'd seen the Ironheart outfit. But there's a possibility that the yeah. suit that, uh, that Shuri's going to create is going to be handed over to, uh, to Riri Williams. But... It does land on the exact person that we all pretty yes. much expected it was going to be. Shuri does take on this role. And the reason she's able to is because this is what she was trying to create to save the Tala, a synthetic version of the heart-shaped uh, flower um, that bestows the powers of the Black Panther. This was what she was trying to create to save the life of T'Challa. And now with the experience of learning who Namor is and learning about the Talakans and the connection, she's able to replicate and connect her um, research into creating this uh, synthetic version of the flower with uh, with Namor and with the Talakans and yeah, with the flower they Yeah, because it's from the gift that Namor... Mm-hmm gives to her while she's at Tolokan, yes. which has elements of their plant. Mm-hmm. And it, it's from analysing that that she's able to then recreate the full profile of the heart-shaped plant that she can then effectively uh, print yeah. and, and, and then grow. We see them planting them later on as well to yeah. create a new source of the the purple heart shaped flower yeah and, and a real a real kind of throwback to the science bros uh, back in the avengers where hulk and, and iron man were working on a problem together here we have iron heart and uh, and uh, shuri working together on yeah. this problem as well i thought that was really cool um but she's not only doing it to create black panther i think she's also trying to get to the ancestral plane which everybody tells her is true but she doesn't believe in because of her science mind this this idea yeah. that you can't have faith and science well, and is I, totally within her exactly i mean i even love the fact that as she is taking on the the crushed f- potion mm-hmm. of the the purple flower she says, "Don't bury me." Yes, as well. Yes, you know, it's it's like I I don't need that. Yeah, uh, you I'm don't doing your ritual. Me. I'm doing what you want me to do. But really, you know, inside of her, she's going there because she wants to have that moment with Queen Queen Ramanda or even with T'Challa. Yeah. Um, she feels that she will be able to see her see her ancestors here, even though she didn't believe it. But it's because she's lost so much. She wants to have that solace that Queen Ramanda says uh, she should get by visiting the ancestral plane. But here we have the shocking, uh, I think, return yeah. of Killmonger. Which is is probably more to do with her psyche. And it is this whole idea of vengeance. I mean, I, I this, this was great for me. Mm-hmm. But the two elements here. Firstly, because when she came into the ancestral plane, it was underwater. Mm-hmm. And because she had used the 
the the plant from the Tolicans. Mm-hmm. As she came out of the water and in the the Wakandan throne room, you could tell it wasn't her mother. But I was thinking, is this Namor? Is this somehow? Namor has infiltrated into this yeah. ancestral plane because of the use of their plant yeah. in, in, in finalizing the DNA, DNA. It wasn't, and it was even more of a surprise because, it, as you say, it was Killmonger. Yeah. And I love just how Killmonger effectively, I'm here because this is what you wanted, mm-hmm. effectively. Your your father would have killed the scientist he killed his own brother. Yes. You know, he also gives a reason, which I can't quite remember, why R- Queen Ramonda is not there. And with T'Challa, it is the point in his mind, in his view, T'Challa, the Black Panther, was too noble. And mm-hmm. um, it clouded his, his strategic sort of, ruthlessness yeah and it is killmonger's ruthlessness and he says this is why you want me mm. and again it's playing into shuri's notion of vengeance here now against the tolicans because of what happened and with the murder of her mother yeah absolutely. and by by no more so yeah. the, you know this gets all very kind of you know deep and thick around and almost like a molasses of what of Shuri just wanting to extract revenge. Yeah. And that's why Killmonger is there yeah. as one of her relatives in the ancestral plane. Yeah. That, that's the advice in this moment that yeah. she's looking for. But, but isn't it, isn't it so different for, uh, for this movie here, having this idea of the ancestral plane, which are the real people who died. That's who she's talking to. This isn't a figment of her imagination. This yeah. isn't a dream or a version of her thoughts. She's drawn forth the actual Eric Killmonger to almost encourage her to take vengeance. Um, she's, She's looking for that. She's not looking for her mother to calm her down and and allow her to deal with her grief. She's looking to stay in that grief and stay in that yeah. pain so that she can fight against them more and take out all of the pain and vengeance she has. She still hasn't recovered from the loss of her brother and now her mother's gone. She wants someone to tell her it's okay to kill um no more and blame everything on him. Yeah. And Eric Killmonger is that person. I thought it was a, a, a fantastic scene, but her rage when she gets back uh, from the ancestral plane, her rage at uh, at not being allowed to see her mother and having Eric Killmonger tell her that she is uh, that she has to use violence effectively, uh, where she takes that out on, on Nakia, um, takes that out in the tra- traditions of Wakanda, which she doesn't believe in, as as we know. She takes she she has that moment of. Um, of anger, um, which reveals that she has got the powers of the Black Panther as well. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. I also love the aftermath of this as well, because mm-hmm. she reveals herself to the council who are all up in the mountains in Mbako's homeland after they've moved, effectively, Wakanda to safety up in um, the, the mountains. Mm-hmm. And again, there's that moment of council where Mbako questions this plan of hers to go after Namor and the Tolicans because he is a god to his people and all this will bring on Wakanda is endless war. Yes. And I don't want that for you. I don't want that for my people. Mm-hmm. Again, this, this, you know, if you go to war and it's not just soldiers, it's, all of your society that has to to deal with this exactly it, it is whether it's front line mm-hmm. civilian casualties so and they've I, seen I, that he can just walk in through the door like you know they they've been a, a society that's been protected for generations yeah. but he can just walk in along with all of his of his troops and destroy Wakanda and all of its people. But, yeah, yeah, and I love this counsel from Mbaku. Now, sure, he doesn't take it on board there, and he goes with her, um, you know, it's, but you know that he sees this as the wrong choice. Yes. And this is the kind of that first little sort of nod to her, possibly that stays in the back of her mind to some extent, that 
this is not how it should be done. It's not what T'Challa would do. It's yeah. not what her mother, importantly, would do. This is mm-hmm. trying to, you know, take vengeance for the death of her yeah. mother. Yeah, create this all-out war. Um, but it does lead to Shuri creating even more uh, suits of armor for uh, for the uh, more powerful members of uh, of Wakanda. Uh, we have Akoya and Annika, who are both uh, former members of uh, of the Dora Milaje, getting their Midnight Angels yes. outfits. Uh, these are uh, in the comic books. These are the kind of um, closest guard to Black Panther. So you have Black Panther and the Midnight Angels, who are another uh, army of the Dora Milaje. There's about six or seven Midnight Angels who all have their own uh, their own outfits their own uh, really powerful outfits uh, like we see here with Akoya and Annika and we also get Riri Williams creating her first Ironheart suit um, so quite similar to Iron Man really <laughs> but uh, yeah. but we know uh, we know that, that that Tony Stark could create that in a cave so uh, so we have her with all the resources of Wakanda uh, to hand I kind of like the, it's just a little nod but I kind of like how much leeway Shuri gives to Riri Williams she kind of goes uh, here you go. You have everything at your disposal. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah, grand. Off you go. It's not like she's standing over and teaching her how yeah. to do things. She knows Riri Williams is able to do this herself. But this allows the Wakandan army to have some really powerful um, weapons at their disposal, effectively, yeah. with Black Panther, the Midnight Angels, and, of course, Ironheart. And, of course, the, the actual uh, the Dora Milaje themselves are very powerful, and Baku and his tribe are really powerful and really strong uh, fighters. So they take the war to a place away from uh, away from Wakanda into the center of the ocean effectively um to yeah. start this battle and draw out the Talokans and Yeah the with a, a new uh vibranium detector detector mm-hmm. um which then sends out this pulse that means they have to come to the surface yes. and i mean it, it is it's just I, I think the thing is as well with these new suits with the midnight angels with ironheart it is also you know, as we saw with the fight between Akoya and kind of Namor's, one of Namor's right hand uh, people, the Tolicans are significantly powered up compared to a Wakandan because okay. they all take this um, leaf mm-hmm. uh, that gives them uh, the powers. And we see that in the battle it, it, uh, on US soil between yes. Akoya that, you know, she. I mean, she takes out a number of just regular foot soldiers, but mm-hmm. they all come back. Um, and mm-hmm. so these enhancements are to try and even the playing field here in this sort of mid-ocean uh, battle, which still with that, it's on a knife edge. You can see the Wakandans getting pushed back and back Absolutely. towards as the battle progresses. You. We see Namora taking out the Sonic to to relieve that. Yes, we, we see um, Namora going after um, Ironheart as well mm-hmm. in the suit. We have yes, the the right hand of Namora, Namora, who is the cousin of Namora. Great to see her played here by Babel Kadina. Um, I think she's a bit more villainous in the comic books. There is a nod to that towards the end, definitely. Uh, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, in a second. definitely. And we but, see but, Alex Livin- Livinali, who is a Tuma, who is mm-hmm. the kind of the big guy with the flat head dress yes. on and um, again a repeat of the warrior battle with Akoya now that she's suited up in her midnight angel outfit mm-hmm. so um you know this is all going on but the ultimate plan is to capture Namor um and effectively dehydrate him mm-hmm. desiccate him because They've they've realized that his powers now I thought this was a strange thing, I have to say okay. that his powers came from the water. Mm-hmm. Because earlier on he says that he is a mutant. He is. That, that's why he is different from the the rest of the people. And mm-hmm. um, he doesn't have this blue hue to his skin mm-hmm. and has pointy ears and the wings mm-hmm. uh, around his ankles. So it was interesting that then they've almost kind of placed a little bit of this limit to his power by saying that if you dry him out enough, he weakens, uh, he which weakens. we, which we yeah. see after they capture him. But yeah. it takes But he's still time. powerful. Yeah, like he, when, when out of the water, he can still fight. He's still absolutely. very powerful. It's almost like he just has to recharge exactly. occasionally and go yeah. back into the water. So, um, yeah. And so they capture him and try and dry him out. Mm-hmm. But he downs uh, the Wakandan ship 
Yeah. And and we have this battle between him and uh, Shuri as the Black Panther. I mean, I almost thought she was going to die as well because he effectively uh, runs her through with a spear. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was like, oh, my goodness, we're we going to get three death. Uh, well, another death in yeah, uh, in this movie. The entire we, family are, are dead in one movie. And yeah, then I with Shuri... The suit heals mm-hmm. her very quickly, mm. I, I'm guessing. Which the suit heals her enough, but she is still in pain yeah. after she takes out Namor. It's not it's not an instant healing, but you can see it uh, in knitting her her skin yeah. back together. But that moment where she breaks the staff so that she can she can pull herself pull this the staff through her, yeah. uh, the, the spear that she's been stabbed with, that she can pull it all the way through. Her. That really shows her strength, definitely, um, and the fact that she's not willing to lie down or die uh, exactly yeah. and i think then we have the moment where shuri has to decide who she is mm-hmm. will you know as she's taken no more out as he's hugely weakened she has this blade against his neck and it is you know is it the path of mercy mm-hmm. and in effect some forgiveness mm-hmm. for killing her mother, or is it vengeance to take the revenge for killing uh, her mother? Mm. And I love the fact that in that moment she has this ancestral vision, of, finally, of her mother, yes. who doesn't tell her what to do, just mm-hmm. says, now is the time to show who mm-hmm. you are. Exactly. And I thought it was great. I yeah. loved it. I it's- was really just perfect absolutely it's you don't have to be me you don't have to be your father you don't have to be your brother you have to be you you have to make your decision and decide what you're going to do in this moment and she chooses mercy of course um you know that that's that's the right way to go here you can't just kill uh namor and by her showing this mercy to namor this kind of creates peace between the two the two uh armies um he realizes what wakanda is really all about and that they aren't willing just to go to um more for the for generations over this um that they can work together that there will be some alliance between the two of them well and she uses her leverage of effectively having a blade to his throat as mm-hmm. well yeah. in that you know you won't kill this scientist but we yes. will keep your secrets we won't tell anyone mm-hmm. and no more here you know takes her offer up yeah. And they come back to effectively stop the fighting on the ship out mm-hmm. in the ocean as, you know, where it's fairly desperate for the Wakandans. They're, yeah. they're pushed to the, the, the bow of the ship yeah. uh, by the, the Tolokans. I hate to say it, the Wakandans would not have won this battle. No, I they wouldn't. Yeah. Um, and, of course, as you say, a bit later on, we see here Namor and Namora. Um, Namora being almost a little bit miffed that mm-hmm. they Absolutely. didn't finish off uh, the Wakandans here, they had the edge, mm-hmm. they had the ground, so so to speak, uh, <laughs> on, on the water. Yeah. Um, and you you get this, you get this, the beautiful duplicity of Namor, this antagonist mm-hmm. out, outside of him. You know, he's not, he's not good, he's not evil, he's, you know, he's both at the same time, in mm. a sense. He is that, where he says, because the rest of the world will direct their focus on Wakanda, not on us. Exactly. You know, this yeah. is why I did it. Yeah. Um, it is that strategic long game is they will keep their secrets, but the rest of the world will ultimately have their focus on Tolokan. Mm-hmm. Or so he believes, but we do see that Contessa Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, mm-hmm. or Val for short. Yeah. Don't call her Val, then. D- but don't call her that. Yeah. Uh, does know about this new civilization yes, because of her underhand uh, sort of bugging of her ex-husband in Everett Ross. You who, can kind of see why they're exes if she's yeah. willing to bug him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, and arrest him. And arrest him, of course. Uh, but she did seem to know where, the, where he keeps the handcuffs in his home, right? Um, so, mm-hmm. so they definitely had that relationship before. Um, that, that is quite an interesting touch, isn't it? Because it, do, it, it did feel like that was... Um, kind of just giving uh, Everett Ross something to do. Uh, he's no real connection with the story here, but being the spy for Wakandans within the US, being the one that's able to give them the information about um, the Tolokans and about Namor and, and what's, what the investigation that's happening uh, in the US is and what they're doing uh, gives him a, 
at least a storyline, but bringing in Val here makes it a much bigger thing because we've yeah. seen that character putting together this force of uh, maligned superheroes, I guess, yeah. we'd, I guess we'd say, or maligned powered people uh, over the course of, uh, of things like Falcon, Falcon and the Winter Soldier and, and Black Widow. Um, we've seen her kind of recruiting over over the, the last, uh, yes. all, all of her appearances. But now it looks like she might be finding her target for the people that she's been recruiting over the last while in uh, in the Tolicans. So uh, so she now knows all about it. So while they may think that they're safe and secure, um, someone someone someone, someone on the surface knows. Yeah. And yeah. it is the director of the CIA. So, yes. 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 That's the whole movie itself. Um, we yeah. usually talk about the post credit scenes, but this, again, a bit of a surprise as to what's sitting in the post credits At the end of the movie itself, Shuri goes uh, to Haiti, uh, meeting up with Nakia to effectively close out her morning. Uh, There's something that's been so central to her character and her, her movement as a character throughout the movie. She goes there to to follow the traditions that her mother laid out for her, that when you are finished your morning period, you burn your funeral uh, outfit, um, which yeah. she does on the beach, has that moment, has a, a great... Oh, absolutely uh tearful uh moment for most people in the cinema when we were watching it last night where yeah. we do see Chadwick Boseman in the role of, of Black Panther all through the memories of Shuri uh, at the end of the movie which leads directly into a post credit scene and this has happened before within Marvel movies where the post credit scene feels like it should just be in the movie it just there's no reason why you wouldn't <laughs> yeah. have this extended scene because that's what it is it's the end of her morning and Nakia and her son come to join um, that the morning that they missed out on for T'Challa, since they didn't uh, go to the funeral of, of T'Challa back in uh, back in Wakanda, and it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really good. I must say, thought this was really kind of well done. That we see that you know Nakia and T'Challa's relationship, because in some ways it was there in Black Panther. You didn't know the mm-hmm. depths of it, and we have here. The, the depths of it with the introduction of Prince T'Challa, King T'Challa's son, mm-hmm. and Nakia's son, and also the reason why she didn't... She, she removed herself from Wakanda, knew about his his illness, and, you know, they agreed that if he died, when he died, that they wouldn't go to the to Wakanda for the funeral yeah. ceremony because he was still too young he did wanted to bring up his son outside of the pressures of the Wakanda court yes it almost feels a little bit like a touchback to Killmonger as well mm-hmm. in a sense in terms of um his uncle yeah sort of wanting to just remove you know from the pressures, the stress, the expectations, whatever it might be mm-hmm. of Wakanda and being in the royal line. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, him marrying um, just a, a a non-Wakandan and having this son. Okay, that's not the case, but it just that, that kind of little touch point of removing, sort of being from the expectation of the royal yes. court in Wakanda. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, when they do uh, even reference the fact that uh, Queen Ramonda has met her grandson, she yes. she does know he exists and, uh, and does understand those reasons for Nakia not bringing him back to, uh, to Wakanda. But a, a beautiful closing scene. Um, and I wish, again, I, I just wish it was in the movie because always when Agreed. the credits roll, especially when you're watching a movie uh, at night in the cinema, always when the credits roll, people stand up and walk out. Um, they think, you know, post credit scene not for me i'm exactly I'll, I'll, I'll watch it on youtube next week but it's that's a weird thing for this post credit scene because it's so connected to the previous scene. exactly um, to me it felt that the post credit scene would have been better with the scene of everett ross being rescued from incarceration mm. by akoya in her midnight angel suit absolutely because uh, yeah. it just had the gag as well of her going well, there's a sight seeing the colonizer in in chains, and yes. um, I just felt that would have been the kind of best, better mid credit, end credit scene yeah. for for this movie. Because you're right, if people have gotten up, they've just not seen this really important yeah. sort of development. This scene that just feels part of the movie is yeah. not even that it's massively important. We're not going to see Prince T'Challa. Um, become Black Panther in the future. Uh, we may see it in twenty years, but we're not going to see this 
a young actor back no. uh, in the next movie as uh, as uh, Black Panther. But that is the other post credit scene. People forget this. That this used to be the kind of post credit scene that we used to get back in the 80s and 90s. The announcement that there is going to be a sequel and we will see Black Panther return. This is uh, laid out really clearly. Yeah. We ha- we didn't know what was going to happen in this movie, whether we would get a, a Black Panther or not. This is Wakanda Forever. This isn't Black Panther 2. It is uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. But the question was, would we get a Black Panther? We now have a Black Panther. And the final post credit, if you want to call it that, is Black Panther will return. So we know we will see Shuri back as uh, Black Panther in the future, which is a, a, it's a big announcement uh, to make at the end of the movie. Yeah. Uh, of course, Ryan Coogler in talks to uh, to return, hopefully, uh, for the next movie. He did say he wanted to walk away from the project, as most people involved in the project wanted to walk away from it when uh, when they did have the loss of, of Chadwick Boseman, because this is such a personal uh, journey that they've all been on together. And you can you can hear that. There's a great interview with uh, Tanishi Coates uh, is doing a, an a official podcast about the making of Black Panther. And there's a great interview with, uh, with Ryan Coogler where he talks about the challenges that were there um, for him to, yeah. to return to this. So he is in talks to come back for Black Panther 3. I hope he does. I think he's a great director. Absolutely. Absolutely, God, he's such a star for for what they're what they're uh, delivering. But his um, sensibilities within. with these characters, I think, is just spot on. Yeah, and there was an announcement uh, last year that we would be getting a TV series focusing on Dora Milaje coming from Ryan Coogler. That he was uh, he was spearheading that. Haven't heard many updates uh, since the original announcement uh, that he was going to be involved in. There was going to be a, a six episode series on on uh, the Dora Milaje. Uh, we have seen them appear in the Disney yeah. Plus show and in, in, uh, Falcon the Winter Soldier. We saw uh, some of the Dora Milaje appear in there. So um, all kind of set up for future uh, Disney Plus shows. But you know. If it's going to be on Disney Plus, if it's a Marvel show, we will definitely be covering it here definitely. on TV Podcast Industries. Yeah. Is there any other things you want to talk about from the movie? Anything else that you want to, uh, that we haven't talked about uh, in our extensive discussion about Wakanda Forever, John? The only thing I kind of had in my mind when they went to uh, Riri Williams' university campus, mm-hmm. and I thought they said it was in California. Yes. And yeah. I actually wondered whether. When they said the inventor of this vibranium detector uh, was a young scientist out mm-hmm. of Caltech and um, on the west coast of the US, I didn't know that that was how they were going to introduce Riri Williams. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking, is this going to be Bruno from Ms. Marvel? Oh, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, again, young scientist, yeah. hugely uh, clever um very adept at all the tech stuff. So I, I initially thought, are we going to get Bruno here? He's the one that sort of has developed this. Um, But alas, no. So yeah, yeah it was uh, just whilst I was there in the cinema, that came to mind in that moment in the movie. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like that. And we are getting an Ironheart series with Riri Williams at the centre of the, of the story. So potentially that's where we see Bruno. Yeah, and she hmm. did, Riri Williams did talk about someone who helps her. Mm-hmm, so it could be Bruno. It don't could know. Be. Maybe we'll have to check that out when we watch uh, this movie again. But will we watch Wakanda Forever again? Overall, John, do you defend Wakanda Forever? I absolutely defend mm-hmm. um, this movie. I give this five Tolkien bubble baths out of five. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah, I just, I just loved all the sentiment of it. I think it walked really good line of um eulogizing chadwick boseman but mm-hmm. also the character t'challa in this uh, and the wakandan society doing that i think you know the themes are very adult around death grief vengeance and this might not be for everyone it might not be uh, everyone's idea of of an mcu movie but i thought it was really powerful i, I think it's um, just shows you how they're able to do this. I think Ryan Coogler, absolutely um, spot on in terms of the pitch, the pacing, mm-hmm. uh, and, and the direction on this. And I think, as I said before, his sensibilities around the Wakandans and now with the Tolokans to me um, is absolutely spot on so for, for me. Yeah. Um, and what can I say? Loved the introduction of uh Namor here mm-hmm. and the Tolokans. Um it just 
made me so happy seeing this. Um, he's a great character. You know, he's not easily defined. Mm. He has the honor of protecting his people. He has that nobility, but he is also duplicitous. He is yeah. conniving in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see both of those. He's, he's not entirely likable. Um, but I just love this introduction here. And I, I, I would love to see a film just with the Tolokan civilization mm -hmm. and, and the more. Um, I absolutely love Tenok Huerta here. Um, as no more, yeah, I, I really, um, you know, seeing Atuma and Namora as well, really, really good. I actually wanted to see more of them. I mm. don't feel you got to know them quite the same, yeah. um, say as the other people around, say Queen Ramona, yeah, or uh, Shuri. But that's to be expected, you mm. know. There's a lot going on in this film. Well, this, so, this, this is a Wakanda movie. Like it's, yes, it's, exactly. Yeah, but introducing exactly. those characters. And they, they, they do feel a little bit like featured Talakans rather than real characters in themselves exactly. in this movie. And I exactly. hope we do see them back in the future. So I really hope we get to see more mm -hmm. of uh, Tolokan here because uh, I just thought the whole sensibility of it was great. Shuri's journey, amazing. Angela Bassett, wow, mm. just fabulous here yep. um so pleased um to just see her act effectively so yep. powerful sort of delicate gracious um regal just amazing yeah uh, loved that there was the cameo of killmonger with mm -hmm. michael b jordan coming in how that connected in with um with shuri so for me um absolutely great film loved it um five tolican bubble baths out of five for me derek do you defend wakanda forever absolutely and it's really interesting we we rewatched uh black panther earlier on this week in preparation as you do uh when you're watching a sequel yeah. for, for an mcu movie and my comment at the end of the movie was i forgot how much i loved letitia wright in that role of shuri and i hope they don't take away that sensibility they had with her, that joyful sensibility they had with her in that movie. And they completely took that away from the yeah, first exactly. the first second of the movie. She is in pain. And it is amazing. She's the central character yeah. of this movie. It is her story. For better or worse, we lose Queen Ramonda as well. And that adds to Shuri's story and her reason for becoming the Black Panther. Yeah. The separation that we see here, that it's no longer the king queen is black is panther true. yeah it's it's now black panther as a character the protector of wakanda with her own uh honor guard almost with the uh with the midnight angels that creates a new character that letitia wright can now embody and become her own version of black panther in the future i think that was such a great choice along with saying goodbye to chadwick boseman and yes what we didn't mention uh and again loved it that Mbaku comes to challenge for the throne yes. of Wakanda. And mm -hmm. in terms of that separation of um, the the throne and the mantle of yeah. Black Panther. And specifically calls out Shuri is not go going to be here. She has other things to do. So he is effectively going to become uh, king yeah, of Wakanda. Yeah, which is fantastic. Love it. Love yeah. it. Um, yes, overall, absolutely defend this movie. Loved it to pieces. Loved what they did and I think it was it's one of those moments that you can feel the love from the cast for this world the pain they had to go through to to make this movie um and it feels like a an ex exploration of grief within the Definitely. MCU it's not going to be for everybody but what movie is uh, these days you know there's there's no movie for everybody anymore um this phase of Marvel particularly has had some of the most standout interesting different films looking for and speaking to different audiences and I think Wakanda Forever is another great example of that I hope it has as much success as the first Black Panther hopefully even more than the first Black Panther because it is one of those movies I think you 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 do need to see if you love uh, Black Panther. Yeah. I, think it, I think it's a great, uh, a, a great sequel yeah. and a great movie overall. Definitely. 
Let us move on to feedback. We got a few uh, items of feedback yeah. from our fellow defenders. Yeah, we're recording day after release, so uh, very early. So I know a lot of you are watching the movie uh, this weekend. Uh, we do want to hear your thoughts. You can email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com if you, if you have any thoughts uh, on, on the movie, or you can go on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries. Spoiler post on there for, like, every time that we cover a movie or TV show, spoiler post on there for Wakanda Forever. Exactly. At, speaking of Facebook and Facebook groups, uh, David Mr. Writer says, Man, they got me. I held it in and held it in, but that post credit scene right at the very end, can you keep a secret? Mm, I dropped the Denzel tear. <laughs> this was so well done, and Shuri, wow, the maturity of the actress. Mm. She went dark. The surprise cameos too. Neymar laid fear into your heart. Don't get me started on the intro, by the way. Gut punch right from the get-go. Mm-hmm. Perfect movie, touch of humor, some horror, mm. drama and pain. I don't know what to expect, but I love, love, loved it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, uh, David. I actually, yeah, I didn't mention it there in the discussion, but you, you've picked up on it, that horror um, element that was brought into here as well. The two deep-sea explorers uh, mm. going to the machine and just the that element that really of it nice, yeah. and just even the, the siren song where you know everyone's in a trance and mm-hmm. it's almost like uh invasion of the body snatchers in that kind mm-hmm. of sense that that you know your body being taken over and mm-hmm. uh, really really good that was great, yeah. um and yeah I, I definitely caught that kind of horror side of it as well and yeah. you're right there is a lot of uh, emotional moments uh, for mm-hmm. sure in, in in this movie yeah and you're right and another one we didn't mention there is some touches of humor but there's a really interesting one that i liked where mbaku is seeing the tolicons arrive in wakanda on the backs of whales and he kind of laughs at it he's like this, this is pretty weird but that turns into horror in itself that turns into oh god they're coming in and using all of the ocean creatures as well yeah. and they can destroy us um I like that 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 they gave that moment to him where he's where he's kind of looking at what's going on. Uh, you know, humpback whales coming in uh, with uh, the tolicans on top of them, and then goes, "Uh oh, this is not going to turn out the way I think it is." Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I thought I thought I thought that was an interesting nod, but uh, but yes, uh, total good punch from the opening, uh, and and yeah, if you didn't uh, deliver your uh, your Denzel tier by the end of the movie. Um, well, you're probably Chris, our other co-host, <laughs> but, uh, who says he never cries at films. But uh, there are many moments uh, of emotion. Uh, and I think by the end of the movie, it had, it had uh, fully drawn me in with it today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, thanks, David. David. Yeah. We also got a, a quick message from Penny Lennox, who says, maybe after I've seen this movie two or three times, I could find something not to like. But I kind of doubt it. Excellent stuff, yeah. Penny. Yeah, I, I completely agree yeah i think i think it is a big emotional roller coaster i think as as we said the only thing i would say is if you're not in the mood to watch a movie about mourning and loss um it may not be one that will come to the top of your list every time or top of my list every time to watch but i think it's a beautifully made movie i'll definitely be watching it many many times again i think it was such a great accomplishment uh to be able to do this we also got some feedback on facebook from sandy resenders who says i wasn't prepared to cry as much as i did I honestly thought we'd get the death in the beginning and then they'd move on. But they carried it throughout the film. I actually loved how they handled it. I'm done ranking these movies, though. I just know I enjoyed it and it was well done. Probably could have been 15 minutes shorter and add those 15 minutes to Thor, Love and Thunder. But I really enjoyed it nonetheless. Great stuff, Sandy. Yeah, it was. It was absolutely um, had those emotional points here with just how they dealt with everything mm-hmm. uh, around the loss of T'Challa and, by extension, uh, Chadwick Boseman. And, and I think you're right. Um, I didn't realize it would be as tightly woven into the movie um, as as it was. And I don't just mean around T'Challa's mm-hmm. death, uh, but also just how with uh queen ramonda and just the effect on shuri and yeah. sort of just her dealing with grief or not dealing with it as the case may be mm-hmm. uh, with everything else going on uh, i thought it was uh really well handled 
Absolutely, absolutely. I know what you mean as well about Sandy about, about trying to race the MCU movies. Now this is the thirtieth movie, as we mentioned earlier on, of the uh, of the MCU. So it's very difficult at this stage to rank uh, out of the thirty movies. But I know this is quite high up for me. I'd say that definitely. Mm. I've actually started two top five lists at oh, this stage. <laughs> yes, <laughs> top five. Anything with Doctor Strange in it. Second well, top exactly. Five, the other stuff without Doctor Strange. <laughs> well, that's bias as well. Like True. I mean, for me. Like, I would say this is better than Multiverse of Madness, mm. but Multiverse of Madness was just a great ride. You like more. And <laughs> it was Doctor Strange. Exactly, exactly. Good stuff. Thanks, Sandy. Donald Dennis also sent us his feedback. He says, I really enjoyed the movie. It was good. The Assault on Wakanda was pretty amazing, and presentation of both, the, of both of the cultures was pretty phenomenal. The afterlife scene was great. The Assault on Wakanda was really exciting. I also like how MCU continues to use future heroes, the MacGuffins, to front load a bit of a character development and make using them in future movies easier. I really expected the feet wings were going to look absolutely stupid. And while they didn't carry them off completely, it looked much better than I expected. And its fight style was very dynamic. All of the water scenes were dark and murky with minimal depth of field. I know that was a special effects budget issue, but a few grand vistas of the undersea areas would have cranked up the visuals of the movie. I find it hard to believe that the giant ship was undetectable on the surface of the ocean. I wish it had looked neater. That whole final shipboard fight was underwhelming, except some of the stuff along the side of the ship, which reminded me of the second Wonder Woman movie. I agree, this movie probably needed the big Marvel fight scene at the end, but this one felt slightly small and gimped by budget. In all though, the movie was good. I think it excelled at opening the world up and exploring the richness of different possible superhero cultures beyond the traditional hero movie. Good stuff, Donald. Um, it's, it's really interesting, isn't it? I, I actually didn't think there was much um, in the way of bad CGI in this movie or, or anything to do with the budget uh, cramping the movie. Um, I thought it all looked really good. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I did too. But I think what Donald has, has raised here is... is Probably a fair point in terms of the ship. I guess it felt constrained because it was on the ship. Mm. Um, I guess the expansion of it was the kidnapping of Namor mm -hmm. to the desert, effectively, yeah. or the attempt uh, at doing that. So, um, yeah, that it was kind of um, maybe just tighter in terms of the area that certainly the Wakandans, as non-aquatic surface dwellers, mm -hmm. uh, were able to, you know, they were constrained by that ship. And, and I think you, I think the point that Donald raises about that ship being undetectable, yes, I mean, mm -hmm. you would think they would know it was there. Um, I guess it, you know, I still don't really have a sense of any technology that the telokens have really mm. other than having the herb the blue herb and, mm -hmm. and being hugely powerful yeah. they haven't used it in a technological way like the wakandans with their their purple herb so mm. i think um it, it's one of those interesting things i guess that you know yeah. it's like them using the whales and the killer whales mm -hmm. and, and those elements even, you know, the bombs that they use, these kind of water bombs, mm -hmm. seem to be, again, it, it is technology there, yeah. so there is something, but it's it, that side of it was a little difficult to to know quite where they are technologically. Yeah, they certainly haven't put all of their uh, resources into technology like the Wakandans have. No, anyway. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, really interesting, Donald. Great to hear your thoughts, and I'm glad you enjoyed it as well. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Donald. And we also got some email feedback from Coffee and Vodka, who says, Greetings, fellow Vibranium-bound defenders. Super shiny recency bias prevented me from seeing the sophomore slump through the Screaming Goats. That was Thor, Love and Thunder. <laughs> I was determined not to do the same with Wakanda forever. It had to win me over in all aspects, not just spectacle. It absolutely blew me away. With no clear villain outside of the colonizer nations which lit the initial fuse, it had believable characters possessing understandable motivation, drama, action, humor, and of course spectacle, all within a beautifully written and tightly knit plot. More than a worthy companion to the first movie, people will be arguing which one's better for as long as Reddit exists. Mm -hmm. Ryan Coogler's writing and direction were amazing. It wasn't just T'Challa's funeral, but Chadwick Boseman's in a heartfelt tribute. 
Namor, which so easily could have been a character portrayed as pure comic book cheese, was well represented as a caring ruler and a viable threat. Even his ankle wings were majestic, a sentence I never expected to write in my life. <laughs> Shuri's growth under pressure, Eric's dream quest appearance, the loss of Queen Ramonda, Riri's introduction, a very real-looking underwater kingdom, Everett's former ties with Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, and so much more. Looking forward to watching both Black Panther movies in succession. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Five fancy flying feet, touching tributes, and Riri built red cutis out of five. Peace and take care, coffee and vodka. P.S. With all the rest of everything going on in this movie, and the war it sets up against the US, Thunderbolts anyone? The reveal of T'Challa's son is hopefully not a plot thread forgotten in the future MCU. Yeah, mm. I hope so too, because I mean, it is highly significant that really. It is, yeah. And so definitely, um, I, I hope that T'Challa's son, Prince T'Challa, uh, is someone uh, that, you know, probably has a good speedy growing up, shall well, maybe, we say. Maybe, and, yeah. You know, at least within the medium term of the MCU. Yeah, I suppose if you think about some of the uh, child characters that have been shown in the MCU, we've had uh, the two kids of Wanda who yeah. uh, are supposed to grow up to become young Avengers, you know, and they're young at the moment. They're only 11 and 12 themselves. So uh, it'll be a while before they uh, make a big appearance as, as their superhero counterparts. Um, and then we have Cassie Lang, of course, uh, Scott Lang's daughter, who has been aged up because of the snap. Yeah. They've, been, they've been able to age her up uh, into, into a fully grown character for the next uh, Quantumania for the next Ant-Man movie so uh, there are ways that they can do it of course um, I think at the emotional button that it, that it puts on the movie itself though uh, knowing that Nakia had a child with uh, T'Challa and that uh, Ramanda did actually meet her grand grandson. All of those emotional buttons were really important. Definitely. Anyway, so hopefully we'll see uh, T'Challa back in the future, especially if we're going to get Black Panther 3 starring Shuri. Um, yeah, cool absolutely. Uh, and I, I think completely agree with everything um, that you've said here. Mm -hmm. I, I think for me, it just that, you know, there was the spectacle, but there was absolutely everything in between. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for me, um, I thought Shuri um, was phenomenal in this queen ramonda phenomenal um i absolutely loved um namor here as mm -hmm. well like you said you know the ankle wings were just felt like they should be there with how he he battled yeah and i just loved the fact that you know he wasn't a clear villain um yeah. yes he's attacking wakanda yes he's just something absolutely dreadful in in a sense drowning uh, Queen Ramonda. Mm -hmm. um, he, I mean, he didn't do that purposefully. It was because she goes to save Riri. Yeah. Um, but for sure, um, the, there is that protector, but as you say, that viable threat. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I still feel when he leans into Queen Ramonda on the beach as she is effectively um, doing a diversion tactic uh, so that they can rescue Shuri. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought that was really impactful yeah. like how uncompromising he would be to protect his people absolutely and um, for sure i thought that was really really good yeah absolutely thanks so much for your email coffee and vodka great to hear from you and great to hear your thoughts yeah thanks coffee and vodka and thank you to everyone who sent in feedback for our um black panther wakanda forever good stuff good to hear your thoughts uh-huh I hope to hear from a lot more of you uh, on our email address and, and uh, through our Facebook group uh, as you see the movie over the next couple of weeks. That's it for our coverage of Wakanda Forever. We have lots and lots more stuff to come for the rest of the year. Uh, a little bit of a break for Marvel at the moment, but we will be back with Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special at the end of November. Eek! Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Let's hope it's going to be good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think... I am praying. I think, you know, they've, they've done one special this year, which was Werewolf by Night, which was their Halloween special, released five weeks before, three weeks before Halloween. Now they're doing their holiday special, releasing uh, around Thanksgiving in the yeah. US, I guess. Uh, but it's a, a, a Christmas-themed uh, holiday special, from what I understand. Um 
The trailer was a bit of a laugh. It was actually, you know, uh, and a bit gives of a, me hope. A bit of a throwaway comedy uh, movie from uh, from James Gunn. Hey, we can we can try it again. Absolutely. Yeah? We will also be back covering Marvel Assembled for the making of She Hulk, following our coverage of She Hulk mm-hmm. um, with the bar exam results from the pub quiz as well yes and we, yes, will we have be, to announce our winner of, we, we of, really the, of the bar do. exam it's yes. in a couple of weeks now um, and we will be touching on the director by night making of uh, werewolf by night as well which was really really good it was um, wasn't it yeah it yeah. was very cool yeah, I we, that. we have had complaints about the assemble documentaries that they feel like um, kind of press kits they're called where it, it, it kind of touches the surface level of what it's like making one of these movies, yeah. you know, the the standard talking heads to camera that tell you, oh, we had a bit of a challenge here or, or you know, the CGI didn't work here or whatever. Whereas Director by Night is an actual documentary yeah. about a person who has wanted to make a Marvel or a, a big budget movie for years. It just happens this person is composer Michael Giancchino and the documentary maker is his brother who has access to everything that yeah. he's done since he's a kid. Really interesting, really different uh, documentary and a really good one. So uh, looking forward to talking about that a bit more. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us for Wakanda Forever. I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the movie and I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Uh, please subscribe to the podcast if you uh, if you want to hear more of our thoughts on uh, on all the movies and TV shows uh, that we cover. Uh, just pop on over to tvpodcastindustries.com or search TV Podcast Industries on any good or villainous podcast catcher. You'll exactly. Find us there. Yes, you can support us by sharing the podcast as well mm-hmm. and sending in feedback. We love to hear your thoughts. We are also over on patreon.com forward slash TV podcast industries or buymeacoffee.com forward slash tvpi uh-huh. yeah but in the meantime fellow defenders it has been great coming back into the mcu and talking about wakanda forever mm-hmm. in the meantime and until we're back next keep watching keep listening and keep defending bye bye bye, bye. 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 bye.